Join us as we journey into the realm of emulation, reviving classic games and exploring its impact on modern digital experiences. What is emulation? In the world of computers, emulators are like magical translators that let one computer pretend to be another. Imagine you have a computer, the host, that speaks a different language from another computer, the guest. The emulator helps the host understand and use the software and devices designed for the guest. Think of it this way. Emulators are like shapeshifters for computers. They can turn a PC into a Mac or make a Linux machine act like it's a Windows computer. This is super handy when you want to run programs that were meant for a different type of computer. Emulators can either be software or special hardware, but most of the time they're just programs you install on your computer. One popular example is Wine, which makes it possible to run Windows programs on a Linux or Mac computer. Another cool emulator is Dolphin, which lets you play Nintendo GameCube and Wii games on your PC. But how do these emulators do their magic? Well, they simulate the behavior of the guest device on the host. It's like putting on a disguise to look and act like someone else. This allows the host computer to understand and run the software meant for the guest computer. So emulators are like digital chameleons that help different computers speak the same language, allowing you to use apps and play games that wouldn't normally work on your machine. They're a nifty way to bridge the gap between different computer systems, making technology more accessible and versatile for everyone. How does emulation work? To understand how emulation works, we need to see its two main types, low-level emulation and high-level emulation. LLE is about imitating the exact behavior of the hardware in the emulated system. It's like trying to copy every move and action of a dancer in a performance. This method aims for accuracy, making the host computer simulate the environment where the software will run. However, it's not always possible because it can be expensive to build hardware that precisely mimics the original system. When hardware isn't an option, software-based emulation comes into play. But this requires a deep understanding of the emulated system and often needs a much more powerful computer than the original. HLE takes a different approach. Instead of copying the hardware itself, it imitates the functions or tasks that the hardware performs. It's like teaching a robot to perform specific actions without making it look like the original performer. HLE uses three techniques. Interpretation, which is slow but precise. Dynamic recompilation, which optimizes how tasks are done. And lists interception, which translates commands for coprocessors. These methods make HLE efficient and adaptable. When emulators work, they need to understand timing and interrupts like a conductor keeping a musical performance on beat. Some old systems, like the Nintendo Entertainment System or NES, are picky about timing, so the emulator needs to make sure it syncs perfectly with a modern computer's processor. Interrupts are like signals from the hardware to the CPU telling it what to do. The emulator has to listen to these signals and act accordingly, just like following traffic signals when driving. Low-level emulation copies the exact moves of a dancer, while high-level emulation teaches a robot to perform specific tasks. Both methods have their strengths and require precise timing and signal following to work seamlessly. Emulation is a clever way to make old software run on modern machines, like watching a classic movie with subtitles to understand it better. Development Emulators didn't just appear out of thin air. They have a history rooted in the early days of computing. The concept of emulating one computer system with another has its origins in the techniques of software simulation. Back in the 1960s, a company called Autonetics came up with a significant breakthrough. They created a simulator in around 1960 to evaluate assembly language programs for a system called D17B, used by the armed services. This simulator allowed them to develop, test and run flight programs before they even built the actual D17B computer hardware. It's worth noting that back then they used the term simulation rather than emulation. The term emulator as we know it today was coined by IBM in 1963 during the development of their NPL product series. IBM used a smart combination of software called microcode, a bridge between the CPU and the visible parts of a computer, along with hardware. This innovation allowed them to speed up simulations significantly compared to the traditional software-based approach. 
To describe this new idea, IBM engineers came up with the term emulator. Interestingly, this term is still used today for both software and microcode-assisted emulation. The world of gaming emulation began to take shape in 1991, when Sega Genesis emulation emerged. Then, in 1995, emulation gained even more traction when it turned into a kind of scene. This scene involved the widespread copying and sharing of ROMs, the software from old game cartridges. Around 1997, emulation got a major speed boost with the development of robust recompilation techniques. This advancement allowed emulators to run much faster. At the same time, companies started producing and selling emulators for classic and modern computer systems. Today, we see emulators in various forms, even on Android devices. You might have heard of popular Android emulators like Bluestacks, Nox, Mimu, and many others. These emulators let you run mobile apps and games on your computer, which is a testament to how far emulation technology has come since its early days in computing history. So, in a nutshell, emulators have a fascinating history that dates back to the early days of computing and have evolved into powerful tools we use today to run software from different systems on our devices. Is emulation legal? Emulators themselves are 100% legal software, just like music players. However, downloading and using game ROMs, the software that runs on emulators, from unauthorized sources is illegal, like torrenting or pirating music. This is because it infringes on the copyright of the game creators and publishers. Essentially, ROM is a digital file that contains a copy of data originally stored on a read-only memory chip. In the case of Nintendo, even though they might not directly profit from older games, playing ROMs on emulators can still be seen as strengthening their brand which is why it's considered illegal. While nobody has been prosecuted for playing ROMs on emulators, websites offering ROM downloads have often been ordered to shut down due to copyright violations. For instance, if you purchase a game from an official source like the PlayStation Network, PSN, for your PS3 or PS4, it's legal because you've obtained the game through authorized channels. However, downloading a PS2 game ROM from any other online source is a copyright violation because those sources lack the legal authority to distribute the game image files. So, to stay on the right side of the law, it's best to purchase games through legitimate platforms and avoid downloading ROMs from unauthorized websites, as this could lead to legal issues and negatively impact the gaming industry as a whole. The nine types of emulation. Emulators come in various types, each serving a specific purpose. Terminal emulators. These software programs mimic traditional computer terminals with displays and keyboards. They enable a host computer to connect to other systems using protocols like Telnet and SSH, allowing command line or graphical interactions. This emulation permits the exchange of files and running of applications between different systems, even if their operating systems differ. Printer emulators. Printer emulations are applications that provide multiple printer command languages for a single printer. Users can select the appropriate language, often simulating popular printer models like HP LaserJet, making the printer compatible with various software. Game console emulators. These simulate the hardware of game consoles, enabling games designed for specific consoles to run on different platforms. They often offer additional features like improved graphics, controller compatibility, and cheat codes. Full system emulators. These comprehensive emulators replicate everything, including CPU, chipset, BIOS, devices, and interrupts. They are complex to build, but useful for various purposes. CPU emulators. CPU emulators mimic the behavior of a physical CPU. They are used for debugging, profiling, and malware analysis, among other tasks. Functional emulators. These simulate the execution of source code written in symbolic assembly language or compiler code rather than binary machine code. They help programmers find errors in their code. Server emulators. Often used for multiplayer games, server emulators mimic authorized internet servers but may not adhere to the same processes. Network emulators. These tools replicate network conditions like latency, glitches, and packet loss for testing network behavior, especially in lab environments. Mobile emulators. These replicate the hardware and software of mobile devices on desktop computers, aiding app developers in testing their applications on various device types and screen sizes. 
these emulators are valuable tools in various fields, from software development to network testing, offering a way to simulate different systems and environments for testing and analysis purposes. And that concludes today's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to cross your T's and square your eyes.